so my name is Alastair Ager. I'm the director of the Institute for Global Health and Development here in Edinburgh and also uh, the director of the Research Unit on Health in Fragility that is really delighted to be organising a week of events, a global health festival with our colleagues from Sierra Leone and Lebanon. So we're going to give people a few uh, moments to join us for this informal uh, conversation on non-communicable disease. More on that in a second. Um, meanwhile, Julia is just sharing some slides uh, here of Freetown um, in Sierra Leone, uh, where Peter Conte will be shortly joining us. Uh, we have some slides here from Beirut in Lebanon, uh, where um, uh, Ibrahim Bouom uh, will be speaking with us later. Uh, and for those of you who are not familiar with Edinburgh, these are some scenes of Edinburgh before lockdown in terms of the Piper active there to give you a flavour for our city here that, that hosts this uh, research unit. Um, thank you, Julie. We can, I think we can lose those slides now. Um, the aim of the Global Health Festival, there are a number of events this week. If you, uh, you must have found your way uh, to us through probably some link to the festival, uh, but if you go, go to www.ruhf-global-health-festival.org, you will find uh, a program for the whole week. And we're really pleased to be having a number of events, some in, in, in Lebanon, uh, some coming uh, from uh, uh, our colleagues in, in, in Freetown, some film viewings, and then a couple of informal conversations uh, regarding the work that we're doing uh, based here in Scotland, but linking in with our colleagues from those, those two settings. And in the chat, uh, you'll see that, that Karen and, and Himini have, have, have shared uh, that link uh, for us. So please do take a look at that uh, and find other events that may be of relevance to you. We're particularly pleased to have the film viewings that uh, some of them uh, are quite short, but very apposite in terms of our themes for the week which are particularly addressing the issue of non-communicable disease, which we're looking at particularly today, uh, but also the issues of, of mental health. So uh, non-communicable disease and mental health is a, a twin focus of the research uh, unit. And it's a, a unit that links the work at Queen uh, Margaret University here in Edinburgh um, with the College of Medicine uh, and Allied Health Sciences in uh, Freetown. Uh, and also with the American University of Beirut in Lebanon. And these three institutions from these three very disparate but very great cities have been working over the last four years uh, to look at a range of issues linked to the, the challenges of delivering health services. But have been particularly looking at these twin threats of, of a rising burden of mental ill health uh, and a rising burden of non-communicable disease. And obviously this was planned all before uh, COVID hit us and we're aware we might touch on it today of how COVID has contributed and made the situation even more complex in, in addressing uh, these particular health risks. Now um, there'll be an opportunity later in the discussion what we, we have up to an hour. Uh, it's good to have uh, you joining us for some Q&A or for some discussions to share more, more generally about this and learn a little bit more about your backgrounds and, and, and your interests. Um, but we're, we're, we're beginning with this idea of assuming that uh, non-communicable disease, uh, which is the focus of our, of our work, it's a somewhat strange uh, title. Um, uh, and, and many will know that what by this we typically mean things such as heart disease, cancer, stroke, uh, lung disease, diabetes. Uh, and in Scotland here, we're increasingly aware that around two thirds of deaths come from these sort of categories of illness. And we would see uh, up to a year or so ago, we would have seen that previous causes of deaths in Scotland, largely due to communicable disease, infectious diseases, that those had decreased over time, and an increasing proportion of deaths was now attributable to these other causes, which have been given this label of non-communicable, because there's not an infectious agent usually quite so involved in, in its transmission. Now, clearly with COVID, we've had a, a really major risk of an infectious disease, uh, but it remains a, a key concern within the globe about this rising tide of non-communicable disease that then being a bigger, bigger picture, not just in the health system in Scotland, but as we'll learn later in the call through Peter and Ibrahim, also uh, in, in Lebanon and, and in Sierra Leone. So we're looking 
at these this category of disease a little bit about how our health systems are responding to it a little bit how our public in our public consciousness are, are re um, responding to this different shape uh, this different set of illnesses that are, are now uh, troubling us and, 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 and causing such a burden on our populations um, so I'm, I'm delighted uh, to have with us uh, uh, two uh, guests, um, Peter Conte, who we were just connecting to. I just want to check that Peter's uh, link is working. So can we just say hello to Peter if he's there, uh, just for a brief hello? Um, I can't see him on my screen at the moment, so we may have lost our connection with Peter again. We'll, if not, we'll come back to him. And then our other guest, uh, who I mentioned, is Ibrahim Bu'om, who is a physician uh, from uh, Beirut. And, and uh, Ibrahim, do you want to just say a few words of welcome of who you are? Um, and then we'll come back to you a little bit later in our discussion. Sure. Thank you so much, Alistair. So my name is Ibrahim Bu'om. I'm a physician by training. Uh, uh, I have a background in public health, focusing on epidemiology and biostatistics from, from both St. Joseph University for the medical background and from AUB, uh, the American University of Beirut. And uh, I had the opportunity to work with the Lebanese Minister of Public Health in 2017 before joining uh, the IGHD dean and doing my doctoral studies focusing on NCDs. Back then, I was the national uh, focal point for NCDs in Lebanon. And now I'm doing my doctoral studies and I have another affiliation with the St. Joseph University as a lecturer in public health. So that's me uh, very quickly back to you, Alistair. And looking it's forward great to have It's great to have you with us, Ibrahim. And, and yes, appreciating your, your, your research studies with us, but also your background in the Ministry of Health and, and, and understanding policy and, and, and practice in Lebanon. So we'll be coming to Ibrahim a little later. Can I just try again with, with, with Peter? I can see him on, on, on the screen there. He's currently muted. Uh, but, but Peter, can you hear us? And can I, I just welcome you uh, to our uh, discussion and just want to say again, uh, just a few words about yourself uh, in introduction. Um, thanks very much. Um, I'm Peter Conte. I'm working with the College of um, Medicine and Allied Health Science, Commerce. And for the ROF project, um, the, the one at the local level in charge to facilitate the, the research within both the control and the, the intervention area. And I've been working with commons on different researches before, but I'm based in Bombali and I've also been working with voluntary service overseas, VSO, before coming to commons. And I'm sure we, I've done a lot of research for them and that is why we, we met with Kiran during my work with VSO and he asked me to support this research because I know the communities and I've been doing a lot of research within these communities. So he asked me to give my support. And I think that is how I came into the research. But basically- yeah, it's, great I've been working... it's great to hear you, and I'll come back to you a little bit more later uh, in terms of some of the details of that, but just it was just to say hello for now, Peter. So really appreciate that. Um, I, I should note in context, we want to make this very much a, a conversation. Uh, the work that we're doing is supported by the National Institutes for Health Re Research, NIHR, uh, which is funded from the UK through uh, funding from overseas development assistance. This, this is funding from the UK taxpayer to support work that is of real value uh, to people uh, in poverty or people living in low income settings. So we're delighted to celebrate uh, the work that's being done in both Lebanon and in Sierra Leone. And also, Peter, you mentioned VSO, uh, a long-standing uh, action of, of the British people in terms of providing volunteer support in key sectors like education and health. And, and it's, an, it's a nice opportunity just to shout out the important work that VSO has been doing in many contexts, including uh, in Sierra Leone. Um, so that was just as an introduction, so you know a little bit about the Institute uh, uh, and, and the research unit, a little bit about Ibrahim and Peter. Uh, I'll be coming to Peter shortly, but what we wanted to do that we're trying to do for at the festival, things that are fairly um, mixed media. So I wanted just to present to you uh, initially a short video from our work in El Salvador. And, and essentially, uh, although the bulk of our work has been focused in Sierra Leone and Lebanon, we've been looking at, at fragile context where the health system has not 
historically had to deal with significant burdens of non-communicable disease, either preventing of or treatment of things like heart disease, uh, stroke, um, uh, and uh, diabetes, the things that I mentioned earlier, but is increasingly for a number of reasons, and we want to come to look and ask about those reasons, why is this an increasing burden, that these health systems are having to do so. And so the, the, the health uh, service in El Salvador invited us uh, to join them uh, a couple of years ago to look at the preparedness, how set up the health system was in El Salvador to be able to deal with the increasing burden that they're experiencing. So um, Julia's gonna share a short video, it's, just, it's about three minutes long with you now, uh, and then I'll come to Peter after this. Thanks, Julia. En el caso de las muertes por enfermedades no transmisibles, a la cabeza tenemos las enfermedades cardiovasculares donde pasamos de una tasa de 132 a 145. Otra de las enfermedades que nos está afectando considerablemente es la diabetes mellitus. Y en tercer lugar tenemos la mortalidad por enfermedad renal crónica. Ya tengo 12 años de padecer diabetes. Y he tenido bastantes complicaciones. A mí el año pasado me abrieron este planta de estetropía. Pues me desarté una espina. Ahora resulta que en este en un cierro trabajando. Y de ahí perdí mi dedo, pero igual nunca me detiene. Yo sé que tengo que trabajar, tengo mis hijos. Mi ocupación era la agricultura en el campo. Cuando la enfermedad se me desarrolló, ya no pude llevar ni un empleo. Mi forma de vivir hoy, últimamente, la familia me apoya. It's important to examine the social connection of people with chronic conditions, particularly in prior context, in order to understand how they solve their health problems who helps them and how governments can improve access to health services for this vulnerable population. El irte a la persona de manera directa te devela la realidad. Cómo la gente le toca enfrentar el problema de salud sin eh, que la institucionalidad del Estado sea el factor protector que debería de ser. We are using innovative research methodologies proposed by St. Margaret University in past communities in El Salvador. These sessions are participative and seek to evaluate the engagement of communities to prevent and treat chronic diseases in El Salvador. Que ahí donde vivimos nosotros no tenemos una unidad de salud competente para lo que uno tiene. El usuario del sistema público de salud tiene esa dificultad. Primero que vive en zonas de violencia. Yo propongo mejorar la seguridad ver de qué manera los ecos llegan a los lugares más distantes de las ciudades para que pueda solucionar sus necesidades de salud. Esta innovación investigativa de parte de la, de la Universidad Queen Margaret sería también un paso inicial para poder incidir en otros elementos que también generan enfermedades crónicas no transmisibles. ¿verdad? Por ejemplo, para prevenir la obesidad, que es también causa temprana de diabetes y de hipertensión. Thanks ever so much, Julia. Um, thank you, Julia. And, and that video just gives us a bit of a flavor of some of the work we've been doing, also some of the themes that we think are so relevant in terms of non-communicable disease. And I, I don't want to um, uh, anticipate too much what we'll be saying with Peter and, and Ibrahim, but the, clearly I, I mentioned the engagement with the health system and there was discussions with doctors and with ministers, of, vice ministers of health there, but that engagement of the community and, and, and of communities uh, in prevention and early uh, detection support uh, for uh, non-communicable disease is clearly a big part of that picture. So we'll perhaps be looking that, at that uh, a little bit later. Um, Peter, I, I want to come to you now. Um, we're gonna be sharing shortly with colleagues a, a video of work that's been going on reflecting the work you've been doing over the last uh, year or two. Uh, I, I wanted to share, in, in terms of asking the first question, I wanted to share an experience that I had when I uh, came uh, to Freetown and then up to Bombali, the district uh, where, where you're working um, uh, around three years ago. And I've, I'd visited Sierra Leone on a number of occasions previously, just after the, the Civil War, for example, and was struck by the, 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 the lack of general health provision, the real importance at that time of uh, child health and maternal health, and indeed the control of infectious disease and some, some other neglected tropical diseases. 
And, and I have to say, when I came, I wasn't sure of really how big a question non-communicable disease would be for a busy uh, district health team like there is in, in Bombali. And I remember going a visit there and being a bit worried that I was somehow imposing an agenda on this district health team. And I was now raising a, another concern that they should have around non-communicable disease, this, this new category of disease or, or separate category of disease, half anticipating them saying, well, we've got lots of other problems as well before we get onto that. But that didn't seem to actually be the reality at all. It really had begun to hit in a very uh, distinct way that this was now a major cause of concern within the district. So I just wondered from that experience of mine, Peter, just a comment from you having worked in, in, in the health system and just seen things develop, you know, how long have NCDs been a major concern and, and what, what seems to have been driving that greater concern in the country? How, how have things changed? Um, thanks, Anastra and the, the entire team. I'm sure the issue of NCDs in Sierra Leone is still a major concern, especially when the, the, the awareness has started because long before now, many people were not being able to diagnose and some of them just believe it was witchcraft, it was wizard because all they, 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 they take it culturally as those are diseases that they were normal before because they were not being diagnosed, the facilities were not there and they don't have the opportunity to visit the, the, the hospital so that they can be diagnosed. So it remains a challenge until when people have started talking about it and they, they've started showing some kind of concern. And now a lot of stakeholders are coming in to see how they can respond because now non-communicable disease, even for the government angle, there is a special unit, the non-communicable disease unit they've created already to see that um, governments will begin to, to actualize certain measures that they will control it or they will see how they can redress some issues and coming to to bombali itself now with this um, new intervention we are sure that a light has started coming to to the issues of non-communicable disease because a lot of awareness have started and what we did the the, the first intervention was to train the the community health officials for us here we call them the CHOs. They are in charge of the chiefdoms within Bombali as a whole. So we train them so that they will go back to their catchment and begin to look at issues of non-communicable disease. Um, the, the, the first intervention we did was to look at uh, high blood pressure uh, and uh, uh, stroke and and other especially and, and also diabetes was in, in included so we look at three uh, um, non-communicable diseases and we said how can we draw an agenda around this and communicate that one with government that this is exactly what is happening in bombali so, so peter the, the, just before you go on to describe the, the, uh, there's something I think important that you said there that i'd like to open up a, a bit for discussion so until this sort of trying to increase awareness, if you like, or sensitivity to that, um, you're saying that there was a rising tide of, for example, high blood pressure or, or diabetes, um, and people would be suffering that within communities, but they would not be accessing, there would be no one actively seeking to detect that, or they wouldn't be, if they went to a, uh, a clinic, uh, for some other complaint, they wouldn't be checked for blood pressure or, or they wouldn't be checked to see if there were early signs of diabetes. Is, is, that, is that right? So you're saying that this, this tide has been coming, but there wasn't the, the mechanism to pick up those, those early signs? Yes. Um, one key challenge is the first one is their willingness to come to the facility when they are sick to be, to be tested. That's one major problem because they believe that the first point of contact for them is the traditional healers and not the, 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 the medical facilities. Yep. So with this um, awareness now, we've discovered, because a lot of time people will get sick and they will say, okay, I will take these apps, I will take these apps and I will get better. 
but when this awareness started, they, 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 they now see the reason, the need for them to be going to the hospital for checkup. So now they, they, they have been checked. And also the, the health workers themselves, they were not like looking for, 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 for those people to come in and to do tests that, oh, we are going to do non-communicable disease tests on them, uh, um, diabetes, high blood pressure. They were not doing that. So that, that, was, that was a serious gap. The people are not willing by then to come to the facility. And even the few that are coming also, the medical personnel are not diagnosing them I know. To, yeah. to really help them. If they come with malaria, they will just go ahead and prescribe the drug for malaria yeah. and yeah. not testing them actually to know what, what, what are the, the, the other uh, um, co-infections. So Peter, co I'm, I'm, again, just on that, that that's just a really important point. I, I realize for, for those of us on the call from, from Scotland, then when you go to the doctors for, for anything, you will, you nearly always, I think, have your blood pressure taken. Even, I, I'm not going complaining of high blood pressure, but it will be, it will be checked as part of a sort of a routine measure of things. And sometimes there will be, you know, bloods taken. So the work that you've been doing, you're saying that's partly changed the culture of the, the routine primary care, sort of routine uh, initial stages of care, that when you go, for you may go because you have some worry about a particular disease, but often NCDs are called silent killers, aren't they? People are not aware that they have necessarily uh, these symptoms, that this is an opportunity to be catching up early signs of, 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 of an illness. Is, 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 that, is that a reasonable way of putting it, do you think, Peter? Yes, because we, we, are, we are talking about two different components. Yeah. The, the regional hospital is just the hub where everyone refer cases that they think they cannot address. But now, mainly our intervention is looking at the peripheral health unit. And there were no doctors at the peripheral health unit. Is these community health workers are the ones they see as doctors at the peripheral health unit. So for them, their normal routine, if a patient comes and says, my head is aching, they will say, okay, take a paracetamol or this, and you go down, you rest. So they are not doing further diagnosis to know exactly what are the, the, the causes and also what are the co-effects. And especially for, for people who are more than 40 years, but after the training of those uh, community health workers, there is a change in culture, in pattern of the way they, they, they now have their normal routine services. Because there are, there are other um, diseases that come with age. Yep. So they were, they were advised that for everyone that is coming, you do thorough screening, do a high blood pressure and other tests. So with that one, they, they've now started drawing the pattern that this is something that is happening. And when we started it, they, they, they now begin to communicate because they also have their platform where every month they come together, they, sit, they give the district health management team, which is at the district level, like the, the Ministry of Health at the district level, they give them updates, what is happening. And in turn, those updates from the district now filter to the yes. national. Cocaine, marijuana, drug, I know. Sorry, Peter, that, uh, we lost you for a okay. second there with, with another caller on the line. Peter, what, okay. what I, want, I want to come to you just to check one thing. Um, so what you're saying, I think it'll be, we'll show it in the video in just a moment, that there's been a change yeah. in the, the behaviour of the uh, health workers within the health system uh, through the training and through, we'll, we'll see the desk guides described in the record card of, of being able to be on the front foot, if you like, anticipating, checking for these things. There was something mentioned in the El Salvador video I just wanted to pick up with you just before we go to the video, which is there's also work with communities. So, that, so you've been working with the health workers to be more aware and, and anticipating doing, doing tests and so on. Can you just tell me in, in one minute what you've been doing with the communities in terms of prevention and, and awareness in terms of some of these risks? Um. We, with the communities, after the training of the health workers, we now come to the community and we draw a plan. We identify the stakeholders that will support us 
in this um, drive, the social mobilization drive. So when we identified a plan, we bring the stakeholders together. And what we did was to introduce the project to them and to, to own so that they can own the project. So we asked them to identify key activities that they think they can carry out within their communities to help the, the research. Because the more the information the people gather, the more they change their behavior, the more they change their pattern. So we, we gave them the opportunity to identify activities and they identified a lot of activities we are in they themselves who champion the, the, the research at their local level. So all we do is to give them the opportunity to, to like review if something is not going well, we try to review. In Arabic, you are in so, so, so that was what we did on the social mobilization. We gave them the opportunity to be the frontliners because yeah. they can okay. their language Maybe. more. So in their own local language, they will understand themselves. And if they see, the, 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 the paramount chief is standing before uh, uh, his own people and communicating about non-communicable disease, they, they will take it more serious. If they see the counselor, if they see the, the pastor, if they see the imam, those, those sectors. So that was what we did, was to identify the stakeholders who know that they have influence and to oh. give them the opportunity to share. That's great, Peter. So we're going we're gonna to cut to a video now to see some of that, and I'll bring you back into the conversation after I have spoken with Ibrahim. Uh, and just to draw people's attention, the, the, the chat is open. Uh, we're going to aim to have time for general discussion and chat at the end uh, for, from comments from Peter and from Ibrahim in particular. So if there's particular issues you want to raise or, or just reflections you want to share, please feel free to use the chat and Karen and Julia will monitor it. Uh, but Julia, if you could take us to our video, this is just describing some of the work that Peter was just talking about. Yeah, if you start that again, I think we had a, a, a sort of a coverage of the screen, but let's try it again. Thanks, Julia. Uh, Andrew S. C. May I the lead facilitator during the social mobilization activities? The impact will, will, will not create to me like that the number of clans there. Sorry, my. Julia, do you want me to try? Yes, please. No, don't worry. I mean, that's okay. So one more try of the video, and then I'll come to you, Ibrahim. Um, and we can, if we're interested, we can't share it now. We'll we'll share the link with people so that you can view it. And it's just describing the, uh, yeah. Uh, thanks, Patrick. We'll we'll share the link so people can view it directly later. Let's give one more one more try. Let's hope you can all see it. But that's good for me. I just don't have volume now, um, Karen. Ah, oh, okay, sorry, that's my settings. If you give me one second. I will do that. Sorry, I'm just trying to get the settings to share the- Well, volume. Karen's just sorting that, say, encourage, uh, colleagues on the call, if you want to reflect anything in the chat, we'll pack up that. We'll be a bit tight for time, but we'll have some time for discussion. Uh, and uh, Peter and Ibrahim in particular can address any of the reflections that, that you have. So while we're waiting to connect to the video, uh, please post any reflections or indeed your own engagement in thinking around non-communicable disease uh, in, in the settings in which you're working. Yeah, sorry, that's not working for me either. I would have to reconnect. To okay, do don't, don't worry. Seems. So um, we've shared the link. Uh, thank you, Mari. So in the in the link, you'll see. Uh, sorry, in the chat, you'll see there's a link there to the video that we were aiming to show. Uh, just to just to say for context that this was um, a description of both of of 
the two aspects of work that Peter was talking about. One was a training and support uh, for primary uh, uh, healthcare professionals, um, uh, supporting them in the early detection of non-communicable disease, identification of it, um, and, and training and recording of that, and just trying to establish the routine monitoring of symptoms in the way that we would want to in, in a high quality uh, primary healthcare provision. And that's now being scaled up across Sierra Leone. And actually we'll also share um, uh, a link uh, in the chat later on, uh, summarizing with this work also been influencing uh, provision in Nigeria, which we're very excited about. Uh, but then the second aspect of the work, which was just being mentioned by Peter, and, and you'll see in the video is around social mobilization. That is this uh, engaging communities in these issues whether it's on the reduction of salt within diet or exercise or other things. So we, we, we're sorry that we can't sh share that with just now, um, but, but it's in the link there in the chat. You'll be able to view that in, in your own time. Um, so thank you for your uh, comment, Katy, uh, Katie, and we'll come back to that later in discussion. But yes, please, others encourage you to post. Uh, I, I want to come to Ibrahim. Um, now, Ibrahim, Lebanon, Freetown, we showed some pictures earlier on. It's, it's a very different context um, from from Sierra Leone. Um, I just, so I want to just start with the first question really similar that I, I asked uh, Peter, which is, you know, what are the pressing concerns regarding non cumulative disease in Lebanon? How has that changed over time? Uh, has that become a big part of the agenda? And how long has that been a pressing issue? And you mentioned right at the outset that you were working within the ministry uh, initially in, in that area. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit about the history of NCDs uh, in Lebanon. So uh, thanks, Alistair. So yeah, I mean, it's somehow similar, but at, at an advanced stage. So uh, I mean, many low and middle income countries are going through the same process, moving from communicable diseases uh, or tackling the burden of communicable diseases to, 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 the, to actually having the burden from non-communicable diseases. Lebanon has actually uh, done what we had done, actually what we call it as an epidemiological transition or this shift from, from communicable uh, to non-communicable diseases early uh, after the civil war that ended in the 1990s. So, or, or early in the 1990s, we started showing actually from the first epidemiological data that actually we, we, we started dealing with non-communicable diseases, meaning cardiovascular diseases, cancer, and uh, chronic respiratory diseases, as you mentioned, uh, Alistair. And we've been seeing that increasing trend in the burden of uh, NCDs because of what we uh, expect and we see uh, all over the globe, especially in low and income countries, uh, with the improvement of, of, of care around maternal health, neonatal health, and so on and so forth. And people move into being uh, uh, aging populations and with the, if I may say, uh, the, the impact of urbanization, globalization, and all these factors, societies try to, I mean, shift from having to deal with communicable diseases to another, to having a burden of non-communicable diseases because of common risk factors, smoking, unhealthy diet, physical inactivity. In Lebanon, it's been the trend since early 1990s, and it is so. It's still the same. The main pressing problem now is that, uh, unfortunately, we're still having this worrying lack of progress in reducing the prevalence of NCD risk factors, especially among the young generation. And the, the, the main reason behind that is this gap in the prevention policy landscape to tackle NCDs. So as we all know, so many uh, evidence-based policy uh, interventions, such as fiscal policies, like here in the UK or elsewhere in Europe, you have taxations on cigarettes, you have the kind of taxation on sugary drinks and so on and so forth. So, Both so Ibrahim, I, I, want, I want to come on to that sort of taxation, I think it's a minute, but just to tell, <clears throat> just to take, take steps in the story, can I just ask a little bit about the clinic sort of context like, that Peter was talking about? So. Um, Lebanon has hit significant economic particular challenges recently, but it's clearly a, a much higher income context um, than, than Sierra Leone. So would it be reasonable to presume that many people as, would be able to seek access at a primary health care centre? They would be able, they would be routinely tested, they would routinely have tests, uh, whether it be for hypertension or whether it be for di diabetes. Is, is that something that could be taken for granted in Lebanon or, or are, the, are, are the problems and barriers to actually accessing before we get to thinking about longer term prevention, which I think is really important. Just tell me a bit more about, about the experience of, of the clinic or the experience of being able to have access to a primary health care physician or, or nurse. 
Uh, unfortunately, I mean, and this is an interesting point, Alistair, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, the, this, the structure of the Lebanese healthcare system is a bit different from here in the UK in terms of what's the main bulk of, of, of care provided or actually where, where is the where is the the provision of service are are, are happening in Lebanon unfortunately there is, more, there is a much of focus on uh, on on providing specialist led services rather than this primary care approach to to NCDs and other illnesses so the system is much more dominated by the private sector and people actually uh, uh, seek or ask for support from specialists rather than from a GP or from a primary care center because of the trend in having this privatization of the system uh, from uh, that was fostered actually during the civil war but i mean so Ibrahim, if, if I'm a poorer Lebanese or perhaps I'm a Syrian refugee in Lebanon, mm -hmm. what, what ability do I have to be able to get into those services if, if they're mostly private and presumably quite costly? The, the major, yeah, I mean, for, for vulnerable people, they rely mainly on whether the Ministry of Health, if they are Lebanese, to get some support for the hospital care mainly and a bit for primary health care services because Again, in the Lebanese context, we have this primary care which, uh, network, which is mainly owned by the civil society. And in Lebanon, the civil society has this role in trying to, to support communities in service provision, especially in terms of healthcare. So those people rely mostly on, on, on uh, primary healthcare centers that are operated by NGOs to get at least, uh, the, the, uh, let's say, medicines and a kind of follow up. But the focus is rather on the cure rather than the care itself or rather than the to, let's say, early detect uh, diseases and try to prevent complications or try to, let's say, treat hypertension to avoid getting a, a heart attack or a heart disease later uh, after several years. So, so you, you touched on this, Abraham, and I'd like you to go on to it. And it is a little bit relevant for what Peter was saying as well in, in Sharon about changes in the economy, changes of, of eating habits and, and so on. Um, in, in Lebanon, that size of, side of prevention of thinking about the environment, not just thinking about detection and cure at the individual level, um, what are the forces in, in, in Lebanon that have made NCDs more frequent and, and, and making that you know, a, a particularly challenging problem. But I, I know you've been addressing some of them in your work. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, the, the, the main reason, uh, I mean, or if you look at this from, and we try to summarize it, unfortunately, we have a serious uh, uh, gaps or serious gaps in, in the policy landscape around NCDs. So th this is what I, I was mentioning around taxation policies, uh, uh, trying to reduce the availability, affordability uh, of NCD risk factors. And, uh, and, uh, and literally Lebanon lacked a lot of, of uh, not, wasn't, be, wasn't being able to actually put in place and implement such policy that can help reduce actually the burden of NCDs, meaning by reducing the incidence of NCDs and reducing the load, the load on the healthcare system, especially now with the economic crisis that if we can, if we can, we can touch up on that later, which actually puts the whole health sector and other sectors on the edge of collapsing in, in the upcoming months. So Ibrahim, can I just ask about that? I, I mentioned at the start of, of the, the, the chat that uh, within Scotland, there are very pressing issues here and the, the, the Health and Social Care Alliance has put together you know, an interesting briefing. And, and I think within Scotland, there's been, been this transition away from a he heavy emphasis on personal lifestyle to thinking about the environment. I've just got the website open in front of them about you know the, 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 the priorities being about reducing the availability of health harming products, regulating the marketing of products. And there's been efforts within Scotland on minimum pricing of alcohol, clearly restrictions within, within tobacco and alcohol sales are, are major issues. I know also Peter might touch on this later that within Sierra Leone there was discussion around uh, tobacco control, but that's been quite challenging politically. What, what about Lebanon? How are those things playing out there? Actually, as I said, there is a serious gap in that, mainly because of uh, the, the, the decades of political instability in Lebanon and uh, plus in, in adding to that the governance feature within the Lebanese policy making cycles and the policy making processes because I mean in Lebanon we don't have 
high level of let's say control of corruption or transparency or accountability within uh, the whole uh, government including how you you would expect people engaging with in multi-sectoral uh, actions to 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 put in place policies around ncds might be um, it might be the same same scenario so technically because of this lack of of looking at ncds being the problem of, uh, of the society or the problem of, of, of policymakers and th there is a legitimacy or then a need to uh, move and actually put in place policies to prevent them. Uh, as you said, the, the focus is more on individuals being responsible of those things, which, which as you said, clearly it's not the case. And we, we need to shift the attention from labeling or framing NCDs as an individual problem or NCD risk factors are, as individual problems towards having them as a societal problems or a public policy problem and try to tackle them from that, that perspective, especially that we know from the literature and we have evidence that those things are cost effective and are more cost effective than just working on educating and just doing some media campaigns to let people know that yeah. health unhealthy diet is is or, or is, is harmful or cigarette smoking is harmful all I, uh, yeah sorry Ibrahim, so i think well that's a really good focus for discussion perhaps we'll we'll throw that open very very shortly in terms of people's reflections on, on that I, I do remember uh, a, an advertising campaign about eating kumquats in the uk which was derided about trying to encourage people to eat more fruit, but it was actually availability and access to fresh fruit in, in neighborhoods. That's the bigger issue and how we've understood uh, that shift from individual choice to one much more of environment. Um, Julia and Karen, I'm just aware of the time. What I'd, I'd quite like to have a shot, if you're confident of showing that video from um, uh, Sierra Leone to use that as a link. I can share the link, from, we have, we have a, a brief video from Lebanon, but we uh, we can put that in the link later. I, I think it would be good to show this for the next two minutes, then I'll bring uh, Ibrahim and Peter back for some discussion uh, with everyone else on the call. So uh, thanks, Karen. Do you want to give it a, sh a shot? Let me try. Okay, it looks like we've got a problem. I don't know what that, that phantom green screen, whether there's some editor. It keeps appear, appearing. Phantom editor. So we've shared the link, I think, to both of those videos in, in the chat. So apologies that we can't show them live, but it'll actually be, be easier for you to, to, to view them. Uh, we've, we've now got, um, um, yeah, we've got... Uh, various ways we'll try it, but with 20, we're well, less than uh, just over 15 minutes left. I actually want to go to discussion. So, what I'm going to do so, there's a couple of questions in the chat which I want to put to uh, to colleagues on the call, and, and please add, add to that. And not the other things that you're picking up on, Karen. So, I'll come to a couple of the questions of, of Katie in just a minute. But, but Peter, could I come to you first? Just after you've heard Ibrahim speaking, and particularly in that sort of transition of things, uh, of, of, of yes, that working at the local level uh, in terms of uh, clinical provision, in terms of the capacities and the skills of health workers, that's clearly important. But Ibrahim is seeing that in Lebanon, there's a need at, at the national level to work, at the governmental level to work in terms of regulation uh, in terms of taxation those sorts of things to really change the environment is, is, is that at all a relevant issue in, in Sierra Leone as well at the moment Peter or, or, or not um, I think is is a relevant issue in Sierra Leone but what the approach we use might be different a bit because sometimes if government is not willing yeah. okay. to have a regulation. Drug. I know. You... Okay. If government is not willing to have a regulation on certain uh, and things that are happening, then you do the, the opposite. Get the people involved, train them so that they can make a choice. So for us in Sierra Leone, we, we engage both the government and the community people at the same time. So what we did, we need the, the, the political uh, buy-in of what we are doing, the commitment of government to see that they really uh, um, support the, the idea. 
and also we we engage the local people also to know the dangers especially uh, um the the high salt intake which we are talking about so for us the the two approaches always go side by side we engage both the government and they are making commitment we we now see they they've now established a whole secretariat for non communicable disease and they they've now taken the step so what we do also because now we we are more connected to the community people we 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 are not saying we read on that to those who are selling but we just create the awareness to the community people that eating too much salt can lead to stroke can lead to high blood pressure and now what is happening literally the community people are now changing their eating pattern so instead of them eating too much salt they now eat less so by so doing the the, the people who are producing it or the people who are selling it they they were drastically redundant because more people are not going in for it so whilst we are waiting for government to to have a policy on that or increase a tax on that we also engage the community people the community people now also have a choice so that that that's how we 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 drive the two aspects of it that, that's really helpful so, Pete. and and the, the other thing also we 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 are we are looking at because is that true yes it, it's so helpful and Okay, let's leave and it there, Peter. I, I, want, I, want to, it. I want to bring in a couple of questions from, from the chats, Peter. Sorry, we've got a, okay. a, slight, a, a slight lag. But I think that's a really good illustration. So that, yes, the government policy is important, but there's much that you can do at the community level. And, and I think you're interesting, of, uh, that interesting example of if you reduce salt, there's economic impact on the salt cellar. It shows the, the broader context uh, of of the work, the sort of the the, the economic, uh, social, environmental aspects that we're we're trying to emphasise. Um, so Ibrahim and Peter, I'll have a little shot of it. But Katie, I actually don't know, Katie, if, if uh, a question linked to the. Um, sorry, I think there's a, a one uh, uh, audio link that keeps on interrupting us, but we're we're persevering. Um, so Katie was asking around the links between NCDs, uh, mental health and stigma in, in Sierra Leone initially, but we, we might want to, you want, want to address that as well, Ibrahim. And I just wanted to say something initially, Katie, which is that it's, it's an interesting question for me because we have uh, focused our work of the last four years on mental health and non-communicable diseases, seeing both a separation and a linkage between them, a, a linkage very much in terms of them uh, having been requiring a continuity of care. Uh, they're not sort of brief episodes, they're things that go on for a long period of time and require you to be uh, in good contact with the health system over time and potentially accessing community resources over time. So we see great continuity in thinking about them in the same way, and yet also wanting to recognize, you know, the discrete disease processes, dis discrete preventative preventative measures that were in, uh, in relation to them. So it was interesting when we first started our work uh, in Sierra Leone, uh, then uh, the, 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 the governmental grouping uh, was non communicable diseases, including mental health, and mental health was understood within that, that broader um, umbrella. Um, Ibrahim, can I come to you? Because you were working within the ministry uh, in Lebanon in terms of non communicable disease. H how was mental health as a clearly in its own way, can be seen as a non communicable disease, but also as a potential uh, overlapping factor um, uh, associated with non communicable disease. How, how was that handled uh, both administratively and practically in, in, in Lebanon, Ibrahim? I mean, uh, it's not just for mental health, but also for all NCDs. So the work that has been done in, uh, has been done in Lebanon is try to shift actually the environment of where we are providing care from being in, the, in that busy uh, environment of outpatient clinics and private hospitals towards a more close to community primary, primary health care services. Because, uh, and this is the work that the Ministry of Public Health tried over the years to, to work in, a, in a, if I may say, in a collaborative governance way with NGOs and the civil society to strengthen centers and being able to shift mental health care and NCD care from being just around, around uh, or being delivered actually uh, in hospitals at, at a secondary and tertiary level towards being actually available as services at the primary care 
uh, level. And I, I think I, I, there's a good point that you mentioned us about the linkages between NCDs and mental health. We know that there is a bi-direction, if, if I may say bi-directional, uh, actually a link between NCDs and mental health in a sense that people with NCDs are at a higher risk of developing mental health because of having this chronic physical illness and also people with mental health because of their inability to have a li good lifestyle sometimes or being at a chronically, if I may, if not, if not treated well, chronically ill health or, uh, or ill mental health, they are at risk of developing these metabolic diseases, diabetes and so on uh, and so forth. So, and the, 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 the way of actually solving this problem, if I may say, whether it is NCD or mental health or both of them, is to shift the system towards what we call a person-centered model or, or what you mentioned, like, like here in the UK, of, of you actually being, sorry for the word, captured by GGPs and to actually being screened for other illnesses, whether you ask for them or, or for being actually screened for them or not. So this is the approach that actually, unfortunately, in many settings, especially in Lebanon, for instance, we don't still have a, 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 a powerful structure for that. We're much giving people, uh, uh, how can I say it, not just vertical services, but sometimes uncoordinated services, depending on who can pay and who can access a specialist-led uh, uh, services. Okay, thanks ever so much, Ibrahim. P Peter, I, I wanted to go to you with this. This is, this is uh, Katie's question, but particularly asking, she, she notes the word stigma, and I, I just wondered what your experience of I suppose there's two parts of the question is about the overlap between mental health issues and, and non-communicable disease issues in communities within Sierra Leone. Uh, I'm particularly aware of those community health officers having very busy roles and continually having new expectations of different uh, uh, roles and supports they might have uh, with respect to different disease risks. But also this issue of stigma, and I su I'm suspecting the stigma is more around mental health issues that the, the non-communicable disease issues, but 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 maybe not. What what's the issue of stigma in the health system in Sierra Leone? Do you do you think, Peter? Um, there are there are issues of stigma that that are coming out, and they they are serious because if not addressed, it's also damage the kind of population that are willing to go out, especially to be tested and so forth, because. Now, with the awareness that is going, people are coming out for tests willingly, and they are being diagnosed and told that this and this is what you do. And if now the issue for us, we know there are many cases that the issue of stigma will play, especially when not being addressed at the, 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 the initial stage. We know we have a lot of uh, um, issues in some um, um, outbreak that has happened before. But now looking at um, um, mental health and the, the issue of non-communicable disease, for us in Sierra Leone, it is no, not that kind of wide thing that, that, that has happened because like we, we are now moving to a, a stage where in people can now talk about issues that they think if not being addressed can lead to another complication in life. So because of that, you, you find out that people have people to talk with and to support them. And that is why uh, um, the government is also now creating some other substations that people can go and report their issues so that they can get. And recently um, they, they, they established a unit, a counseling unit for each peripheral health unit within the, the health center there is a counseling unit because there are some cases that will go to the facility. They, they are psychological issues and not, not that, uh, um, um, that, 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 that they, they, they need too much drug on them and so forth. There are issues that, that, that need medication, but there are some issues that just need uh, like psychosocial therapy to be addressed. So they, 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 they created that unit within the, 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 the facilities and make sure that the people that are working there, even though the facilities are limited because for the whole district, we have like um, um, 100 and some more um, peripheral health units, but we just have two. But that, that is a good start because those guys who have been sent, they are also now training other people. And there are a lot of young people that are coming from the university as community health workers maybe there, there, there are some facilities, you have like three of them. So the one is automatically stepping into that shoe if they have been trained. So now that is what is happening. 
I am currently in Sierra Leone. Okay, thank you, thank you so much, Peter. And and that hints just one thing. It's really useful for me to be able to emphasize. You you mentioned at the start of the call your work with VSO, uh, which we collaborated with in 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 piloting this uh, care uh, package for uh, noncommunal disease prevention treatment at the at the peripheral health level, at the the basic clinic level. And, and it's really been great to see your work sort of develop something that is both feasible to do in, in a, a fairly resource constrained environment that the, the national ministry has now adopted as a global, uh, as a, a frame for the whole country and, and in the process of scaling that up and taking it from clinic to clinic and district to district. So aware, like you say, for the primary uh, health MHPSS, mental health support, it, it's going to there are lots of constraints to that scaling up but it's it's really encouraging that there are some models that that now can, can be shared uh, across the country um we just have five minutes left so i just want to really wrap up one or two things so big thanks to to julia karen and to mari who've posted in the chat the various links so actually there, there are a number of videos we just wanted to show one we obviously had problems with that in, in, in terms of its compatibility with Zoom and that additional screen, but those are all posted in the chat now. So you should be able to access them from there and, and, and please feel free to share those. Everything's very much free, free to view, share to view. Uh, if you have any further problems with it, just get back to us uh, through the, the Global Health Festival website. We'll be able to get stuff to you. There's a couple of other things we've posted in the chat. I, I posted uh, a, a briefing, you'll just see uh, after my, my name or just before my name, which is a document that very much uh, tries to provide a, a simple brief in terms of what was done in Sierra Leone and what was copied in uh, Nigeria in terms of making an accessible package for training at the primary healthcare level and, and the report cards and the training. So that's a useful tool. We encourage you very much to share that. And then I might, I was going to have any final calls for questions, but then I, we might close. There's, there's a short video. We've just touched on the overlap between mental uh, health and NCDs. And with colleagues, uh, there's some work looking at physical exercise for refugees uh, as a way of also promoting well being, obviously physical well being, but also mental well, well being. Uh, I, I see you've put your camera on, Patrick. So I don't know if you wanted to ask a question, which you're very welcome to just before I, I, I wrap up. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Alistair. Hi, sorry, it's Patrick here from NIHR, sort of a global health communications person. Uh, yeah, I guess that you've got such a wealth of, of really interesting resources here. Uh, and um, and I just wondered if I, I want to update colleagues. Uh, you know, I've, I've flagged up that the festival's happening, but everyone's so busy, etc. Yeah. Uh, if there's one thing, I mean, it's, it's it, it, are all of these going to be linked to from the festival uh, website? And maybe just if I could ask if you could send me an updated link, and then I can put something in our, uh, our sort of internal newsletter thing. Yeah, uh, on Monday. Um, happy, happy to do that. Yes, we'll we'll add with, with one easy landing state. Yeah, very happy to do that, Patrick. And, and thanks for your support and encouragement and, and for joining the call. So so yes, now we're very pleased to have the. Very much like the, the sense we've had and with colleagues, hopefully the, the videos bring something to life and, and, and the earlier one from, from El Salvador also. So thanks ever so much, Patrick. We, we, we'll, we'll sort that out. Um, so what I want to do, uh, Julie, if you wouldn't mind, if you just take us to the, uh, the animation, I think it's a good, a good way to, to close. It's, this is a message in Arabic, but it's, it's subtitled. Uh, there's a number of, of animations being shown during the week, uh, including around NCDs, three teaspoons of sugar, uh, I strongly recommend a viewing of that from South Africa. Very powerful message in a short, uh, short um, um, animation. And we're really keen to have materials that are very much accessible to general publics. Really thank you for your time. Thank you for your questions, Katie. Um, and uh, do encourage others of you to join other events for the Global Health Festival. So many thanks. And we'll just go to the, the close through this animation. Julia, thank you. Do we have audio on your system? Um, there is sound. Thank you, Julia. 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 Thank you, Julia.
بدي غير هيدا الشعور بس ما بعرف كيف في كتير أشياء بتصير نحن ما فينا نسيطر عليها وهذا شي عادي أتذكر في أشياء تانية فينا نسيطر عليها شو هالأشياء؟ إنه نضل بنشاط وحركة بس كون نشيطة بحس حالي قوية عندي طاقة أكثر لأعمل أشياء أكثر كل يوم بحس إني مبسوطة أكثر بس كون زعلانة أو ما لي خلع على أي شي بحب كون نشيطة هذا الشي بيخليني أكثر مبسوطة ومرتاحة مع حالي أنا بحس بصحة أفضل بس أعمل تمارين عم بعمل جسمي أقوى كرمال أقدر حارب أكثر الأمراض بس أنا ما عندي الطاقة لأتحرك ما بحس حالي فيني أعمل رياضة أمرار بداية التمارين الرياضية هو شي صعب ولكن مجرد أنك تبلش رح تحس حالك أفضل كل ما كنت نشيط كل ما كان عندك طاقة أكثر التمارين الرياضية هي لكل شخص فينا إن كان صبي أو بنت كبير أو صغير النشاطات الجسدية بتساعد على تخفيف الضغوطات بجسمه هذا بيعملك مبسوط أكتر أكتر رياحة وصحة أفضل كل شخص بالعالم في يعمل تمارين ما بيهم مين بيكون أو وين بيعيش لازم بس تلاقي التمرين أو النشاط اللي بخليك مبسوط بيتي هوني يا كالو وقات انكسك آسي مرة قد دارلو فيك أنو تنسي شي بوشاب سي تابلنا قد جبدك سرالو يما جمرا جزي بوشاب انكسك آسي لمسرا سموكر لامس جزي بتشا نبر كولا سامنتات بوهالا أسر بوشاب مسرا تجالكو أهم بيك أنو حيا بوشاب مسرا تجيالو بزو يا كالو وقات انكسك آسي بسر راقو ترد انكارا يهون كنا بحب أمشي وطنشت ما عندي كبيرة بالعمر يا عندي تس النجات ظهري بيوجعني لما نشط جسمي عقلي عقلي وجسمي بيرتاحوا أحلى من القعدة طول النهار أنا بحمل أشياء ثقيلة بسبب شغلي وهذا الشيء بيعطيني لياقة جسدية وبيخليني أقوى كمان وهي القوة بتخليني أتسلك أقوى ولوقت أطول كمان الشباب والصبايا لازم يمارسوا الرياضة أقل شي 150 دقيقة بالأسبوع ونحن كأولاد لازم نلعب أقل شي 60 دقيقة كل يوم في كتير نشاطات فينا نعملها هيدا شي كتير حلو بس بلكي أزت حالي بس تجرب تمرين ما تنسى تبلش بشكل بطيء كرمال تتأكد إنك عم تعمل حركات مزبوطين رفقاتك فيهم يساعدوك ما لازم تكون بطريقة بتأذي أمرار التمارين بتكون بدها تحدي أو صعب شوي هذا بساعد جسمك وبيعمل عقلك أقوى كتير حلو أنا جاهز بلش تمرين جديد واو شوف أنت تسلقت شي صعب هلا أنت كتير قوي شكرا كتير بس كون نشيط بس حالي أقل توتر نام بشكل أفضل بالليل حاسس حالي بصحة أفضل قادر اتغلب اكتر على الصعوبات هلا صرت متفائل ومتحمس اكتر لاعمل اشياء اكتر Okay thank you all and thank you for your attendance at this session and uh, do hope to see you at another one over the course of the week uh, thank you for your questions particularly Katie appreciate that uh, and stay connected with us and enjoy other presentations. And thanks for the team, particular thanks to Peter and Ibrahim for your engagement and your broader work uh, in this area. Uh, and, and thanks to Mari and uh, Karen and Julia uh, in, and Kimani in the background. Thanks then all, bye.